huge patch it just dropped for PUBG, and yet again we see major changes and lots of new stuff. First off, Wrangle version 2 is now finally coming to live servers and will hit on the 23rd of July together with the rest of this patch that you can play on test servers right now. They have made some extra changes since we tried this map last time, such as adding trenches. Hmm. And they've also added barriers on the beach. The addition to the beach is awesome as you're no longer completely without cover there. Cool. They also reduced the grass density and color saturation and thank god for that, this won't be like Sanak now. The overall brightness has also been reduced. A new season pass called Aftermath is also coming and in there you'll find tons of new missions and rewards. It also has a new co-op mission system that allows you to work together with other teammates to complete missions. Not 100% sure how that works though. Worth noting is that we get another set of weapon challenge missions. I love these and I can't wait to get started completing those again. Also look at this Vector skin. Mm. The skins in the season pass are pretty cool I guess. But it seems like PUBG also got some help from PUBG mobile skin designers. Uh... Season 4 in the No Life Progression System, also known as the Survival Title System, starts once the update hits the live servers. And now, big changes to weapon damage. PUBG again actively pushing for people to use close quarters weapons more. This is done by increasing the damage of shotguns and submachine guns while reducing the damage of assault rifles. This actually has quite a big impact on gameplay as time to kill times will be noticeably affected by this. I'll cover this more after the patch goes live. The damage of the Car 98 is increased while the damage of the M24 is reduced and this change makes great sense in terms of balance as you'll now be able to choose between an M24 with high bullet velocity or a Car 98 that hits harder. Both weapons will still one-shot a level 2 helmet and won't be able to one-shot a level 3. Laser sights also gets a buff when on pistols which was already the only place you'd want to use them anyway. Lastly, there's some bad news for all you 6x S12K shotgun snipers as your pellets will now only be able to travel 150 meters down from 1000. The duckbill shotgun attachment now works vertically instead of horizontally. I do consider this a buff as more of your pellets should be able to hit your target now. Crossbows received the biggest buff ever as arrows now have a visible tracer which will make it significantly easier to correct your aim and hit your target. Crossbow only games, here I come. The Uzi also received its biggest buff ever as it can now take a huge fat holocyte or a nice slick red dot. This completely changes the weapon and is now a weapon I kinda look forward to using. I love this. Tell me again next, please. Vehicles also received a lot of changes. In the buff department, vehicles with rear-wheel drive got improved handling and then the regular plus three-seater motorbike had its stability improved. This just makes the three-seater bike feel even more like a brick when you turn the wheel. If we compare that handling to the handling of a Dacia, it looks like this. So yeah, I'll stick with the Dacia. Also because it looks so much better now with its updated model and interior. Very nice. The max speed of the scooter has been increased from 90 to 105 km per hour and the buggy is now also noticeably faster than before as you can see from this side by side test. Apart from the speed, the tires of the buggy now requires 4 bullets to pop instead of 3, and its handling has been greatly improved. The hit points of the UAZ has been greatly increased, which means that it requires a whole 11 more bullets from an AKM to destroy.
PUBG has also done trolling us with the Tuk Tuk as they double its health and increased its max from 70 to 85. Still bad though. And for the vehicle nerfs, the Murado had its hit points reduced from 1000 to 900. And all motorbikes will now consume roughly 50% more fuel than before. On a 1km drive, the difference looks like this when driving a normal two-wheeled bike. And in this other side-by-side -side test, we can see that the acceleration of the Dacia and boost multiplier rate has also been reduced, but the max speed will stay the same. Also, the Dacia and Murata will lose about 50% speed when driving on surfaces like sand, mud, grass and dirt. And driving on rocky surfaces will now be generally more difficult, as friction on these has been decreased by 10%. There are new sounds for the buggy and Murato, but I'm not sure it's the engine sound, because I can't really hear a difference. Instead of having a visual effect of boosting, you now get a noticeable higher RPM sound when you boost. And aiming inside vehicles is now steadier, making drive-bys easier, and the FPP camera view in vehicles has also been improved. The BRDM fun is over, as they added a locking feature that will make it impossible for enemy players to enter the vehicle, as long as you're inside. And the damage the vehicle takes in solos has been increased by an entire 80% and 40% for duos. You can now also use your auto run feature in all vehicles for some no-hands driving. And the vehicle's now got a car radio where you can play some sweet PUBG tunes. This is a fun feature unless you're driving because then you can't hear the radio at all. Yes, it was still playing. Heal and boost items can now be used while moving, which is a huge change, and I'm very curious to see how this changes the game. Bandages will now auto-reuse until you're at 75% health, which can be cancelled at any time. The movement speed while healing isn't great, but still, this is quite a big deal. Oh, and first aids will no longer be able to heal additional damage if you take damage after the heal has started. Now to some visual stuff. Molotovs now look way more awesome than before. The muscle flash of weapons has been optimized and differentiated for each weapon. And fragments explode differently on different surfaces. The max usable distance for radio message markers have been reduced from 500 to 300 meters. And finally, we're getting a fix to FPS, making your gun shoot slower and thereby reduce your DPS. I did test this and it seems like it works exactly like it should. Irangled blue zone changes are coming too, and the following changes will happen. The size of the safe zone in the early phases has been reduced. Blue zone waiting time in early and mid game phases has also been reduced. Movement speed of the blue zone during some mid and late phases have been decreased, and blue zone waiting time for the final phase has also been reduced. They also added a record player that you can find on a wrangle. This will play music that is audible to players near it. I can already see how you can use this to bait people into an ambush. Excellent. Apart from this, there's some UI improvements in your customized tab. Star UI improvements and Weapon Mastery UI improvements, all good stuff. The wheel UI has also been improved. The matchmaking system has received a big update that will have a big impact on regions with fewer players. In short, this means that in regions with few players, map selection will be either limited or removed. And if you can't get into a match, you'll be offered to join a game in a different region instead. 
I recommend that you read this in the patch notes and check out the part that is relevant to your region. The patch note link is in the description below. The world of PUBG will now also have banners reflecting the PUBG Nations Cup and the Weekend Night mode will now appear less often like it did before it was made more frequent. In the performance section we have faster map loading speeds, improvements to reduce instances of stuttering and optimization of character movement out of your field of view to improve your performance. Old replays will again be broken so I hope you aren't trying to save some cool moments there. Finally, in the bug fixes, there are some interesting things. The smoke grenade fix to prevent smokes from floating in the air is cool, and you can no longer mark the airdrop location by using the ping system. Check out the full bug list in the patch notes if you care. Now that's it guys, overall super cool patch with lots of visual improvements, balance changes and a new map. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the assault rifle nerfs, but like I said, I'll look more into this and get back to you after the patch is live. I hope you found this helpful and if you did, subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you guys next time.